So as promised in the introduction, you get some better pictures of the actual supports. Earlier it was just my goal to give you a general overview of the structure and the location of the supports. Now I want to talk about the differences between the supports. As mentioned before, here you can see that this part is actually sitting on top of the steel plate and this is actually allowed to rock. And it's actually called a rocker sometimes or a roller. So let's call this here a roller support. So roller. So this is a roller support, sometimes also called a rocker. And I think the picture speaks for itself, right? Why it's called a rocker. Now I want you to pay close attention because there is actually an axis in here about which the system is free to rotate. So you can have like rotation in this direction. And also since we're talking about this right now, which later on we call degrees of freedom, you may understand that this system is not restricted to move in this direction. So there's a degree of freedom in that direction. The only thing that the roller prevents from happening is actually a vertical, in this case, direction. So there would be a force that is resisted in this direction. So the only thing that this support resists is the vertical direction. Now let's take a look at the picture to the right of it. That one also has a very similar look and yes, there's also a axis of rotation about which the system is free to rotate. But now please take a look at the plate here on the bottom. There's no sliding like here, there's actually a bolted connection. And what that means is that we need to use our red color here, I guess. So I have restriction in this direction. It is definitely not able to move in that direction but it's also not able to move in the vertical direction. So these are both restricted degrees of freedom, if you will, whereas the purple one here is still allowed to happen. Now, that one we call a pin because the only thing that is free to rotate is the rotation, right? Or the only thing that's allowed to move is the rotation. So it rotates about that pin. So think of this axis as the pin. So you would say, hey, this one here has a pin too. Yes, that's true, but it also is allowed to roll along this axis. And now you guessed it, the last one here is called a fixed, fixed support, because in this case, all our aspects are prevented, right? So for example, this direction cannot move, it's restricted, then also it cannot move up and down. And in this case also because of these bolts here which connect this beam to, let's call this here the support, right? So the, the column here is really the support in this case. So we have the beam that is rigidly connected to the column and therefore we actually end up with a system that cannot rotate and cannot turn about a pin axis. So those are the three different systems and now I prepared some more pictures for you just so that you get a better variety of it and let's take a look at them and appreciate the differences. So I love this picture here because here we have a rocker or a roller whereas here we have a pin not very clearly to be seen but you can see a difference between this one and this one. And so here I really talk about a roller so roller and then here we have a pin and then here we have fixed so let's talk about those more so here you can see it's actually a 3d arrangement this here is an arc of a bridge and there's a abutment here where the pin is clearly to be seen here this cannot move parallel to the surface it cannot move vertically to the surface it can only rotate about this axis and therefore it's a pin this picture you have seen before, this is a fixed support because this connects these two elements rigidly. And then we talked about this here earlier. This is really the neoprene pad, which really is a roller. Sometimes it's used like a pin, but you can probably understand that if this part here, this part of the beam only sits on this neoprene pad, it's really free to move left and right. It can rotate down, it can rotate up, it's just uh, supposed to allow mo motion 
in the horizontal direction in this case. And then here's a beautiful picture of a pin, which is a 3D pin, where you can see this plate here is actually attached to the ground. And then this part here is coming from the structure and they are pinned together here. And you can see the entire structure right here in the background as it looks like. So there's pin pinned. And then last but not least, we have another corner, which is fixed support. So let's complete this and let's say that this is a roller. And then here we have a pin. And then here we have fixed. And that's our supports. And I believe those provide a beautiful overview of the general support types, which now you have a clear physical interpretation of. And you can now differentiate between the roller, the pin and the fixed support. But on the next page, I want to clarify how these images are idealized by engineers on a piece of paper. So now, last but not least, before we solve problems, we need to understand how these support reaction types are idealized on paper. And we already talked about all these terms. So let's take them one by one and define them properly. So here for the first row, what you see is a variation or a different variation of a roller or a rocker. And so this roller, as you can see, is symbolized by two parallel lines. And really what those two parallel lines symbolize is the friction plane or the plane in which the system is free to move. So if I apply a let's say coordinate system to the entire roller, then let's say that for this one here, I have a X axis and then here I have a Y axis. But really the way engineers think about this is as parallel and perpendicular components. So therefore let's draw it for this system here as well. So we have, of course, an X axis, which happens to be parallel and a Y axis that happens to be perpendicular. And notice that I am usually nice enough to also draw these circles on top of it. In some textbooks, you find them represented as such, but this symbolizes to me that it's actually free, free to rotate about that point. So notice that we can move in the X direction. We cannot move in the Y direction. And yes, this picture is not super clear. It prevents upwards motion and downwards motion. Some people think it could lift up because there's not, nothing that prevents that. But as you saw, for example, for the railroad bridge, it's heavy enough that there will be no uplift for sure. However, motion in the X direction, no motion in the Y direction, and motion is possible in the rotation about the Z axis. And I represent that with these circles usually. Um, before I move on and fill out the rest, since we're talking about this, please note that here this looks very similar for, of course, what we'd call the pin later, right? So this would be the pin. But the difference between the two is the parallel sliding plane, right? So that's clearly visible if you compare this picture to, for example, this picture or this picture to this picture. But let's first complete our row for the roller now. So we have degrees of freedom and the degree of freedom in this case is really in the X direction, right? And that is probably the more obvious one to see because the picture nicely shows the plane. But keep in mind the circle here and the fact that this part of the beam is actually free to rotate about this point. So therefore, I have a second degree of freedom for this one, which would be rotation about, and important about, z-axis. Because keep in mind that technically the z-axis comes out of the plane to you, right? And we therefore always call that counterclockwise positive. Now, the restricted degree of freedom in this case leaves only one of them, which is the y direction or better said, actually perpendicular to sliding plane, right? So, and that completes the roller. Now for the pin, I don't think we need to talk much more about these pictures here, only the difference that we already addressed. 
the difference between the sliding plane and not having the sliding plane. So the way I think of them is like this here is like standing on a roller skate, whereas this one here is standing on golf shoes. So the golf shoes actually dig into the ground, whereas the roller skates can actually slide across the surface. And therefore, you know that here now you have another restricted degree of freedom, which is not just the y direction, it's also the x direction. So let's actually add a coordinate system here so that we agree on that. So I usually would end up with an x axis here and a y axis here. And then I can write that I have restricted degrees of freedom, for example, in the x direction. and in the y direction. And so what engineers are usually after is the parallel and perpendicular component to support surface, right? To surface. So that is what we want to know. However, just as the roller, the pin also has the circle here, and that means this thing is allowed to move and to rotate about the z-axis. So therefore we have a degree of freedom that is free. I know that sounds like double free degree of freedom, right? But it gets the point across. So we have rotation about z-axis. And last but not least, let's take a look at the symbol for our fixed support. So here we see the fixed support and what's different now, we remove the triangle and the circle because the circle or for some people the triangle indicates free rotation, but this now is really like fixed. So this is like you holding your pencil in one hand and not letting it rotate out of your hand. That is exactly what this shows. And of course this can be under an angle or a vertical, it doesn't really matter. But that we call fixed usually. So let's complete the table for that. So this would be fixed. And degree of freedom, we have none here, as long as we're talking about 2D, of course. But we have x direction as restricted. We have the y direction restricted. And we have rotation about z-axis. And just to be very clear here, just because we don't have that on this page, just understand that we have a Z axis that comes out of the plane somewhere. So for example, here we would have Z, but we do not consider that in 2D. So third dimension not considered. in 2D. Therefore, we just use clockwise or counterclockwise. So clockwise or counterclockwise. And I think that explains this table and now gets us ready to really interpret these results and teaches us how to read the different support reaction types and how to idealize them on paper. So let me just finish with the restricted degree of freedom is usually what we try to find. That is what we usually are after as engineers. And so let's maybe write that here on the very side. So the restricted degree of freedom is what we try to solve for. So we engineers in this class, I should probably say, solve for the restricted degrees of freedom. Degree of freedom. So now we understand the physical interpretation. We saw many pictures of different support reactions. We understand how to idealize them. We understand how to read the symbols. So therefore we are now ready to tackle problems in which we are asked to solve support reactions for rigid bodies in equilibrium.
In fact, that is the thing we're going to focus on for the next three lectures. All we are asked are to report support reactions in different scenarios. And once we're done with that, we will actually move on to what's called internal forces. But to understand internal forces, we need a solid understanding of support reactions. And that is what we will from now on tackle in our example problems. So let's move on and start our first example problems for support reactions.